All right. Um, hi, everyone. Um, today, I'll be doing my best to demonstrate the differences between SARSA and Q-learning. Um, in this example, I'll be showing how SARSA and Q-learning uh, generate a path from, let's say, a start state over here over all the way to the goal. And the way it generates these paths, right, is by calculating different Q values, right? The calculating different Q values and finding the best Q values that give a path that will go around the cliff, something like this, right? Where the cliff is just like a area with really, really poor reward. So you obviously want to uh, avoid that. Um, the key thing to notice about the differences between these two algorithms is that pretty much the way you uh, generate your successor states or, or successor action and the way you calculate and update your current state action pair, right? These algorithms give quite different outputs, but the way you actually implement them are very, very uh, similar. Like the differences are quite subtle, but the outputs are very different. And today I'll be just doing my best to go over the, the differences and just to explain why, um, I guess people like to say, uh, key learning is more of like a kind of greedy, optimistic algorithm. And SARSA is more, um, more I guess, conservative and I guess accounts for more factors that, that go on. Uh, just to, I guess, define some terms here. This means that for every transition action, I have a minus one reward. So this tells the robot that, uh, you know, it wants to get to the goal as soon as possible because as soon as long as it's alive or as long as it stays alive inside this grid world, it's it loses energy or loses rewards. If it gets to the goal, it has a hundred reward, and and then if it falls up, it gets to the cliff over here, it has a really bad reward. So in general, it wants to make a path that gets to over here as fast and also as safe as possible. Um, but depending on SARSA and Q learning, right? They're your algorithms. Some paths might be more optimal, some paths might be more safe, and you'll see why I mean in a moment. First, I'll be talking about SARSA. So let's think about what's going on over here. So look at all these green arrows, right? All of these green arrows um, represent your different state action pairs. I know I didn't draw all the green arrows possible, but just bear with me here. These state action pairs, let's say that they all have some QSA values or values or utility values assigned from them from before, right? Right now, we're in the middle of running uh, SARSA. We're in the middle of running a SARSA. And our goal is to update these little, uh, I guess, QSA values, all these little green arrows, they have numbers attached to them. Our goal is to update all these little green numbers over here so that they converge to a more optimal, I, or they, they converge to a, a state where we can be comfortably say, OK, this is what we want. And then those QSA values, the max of each state, will give us some path that will probably look like something like this, okay? So our goal is to update all these utility values after looping this some number of times, after a series of episodes. Okay, so right now we're over here, right? I'm gonna walk through what SARSA does when it takes a step forward and generates the QSA value for this location. For this scenario, right now, let's say our action for this state was to go downwards. I'm gonna swap to my laser pointer, to go downwards, okay? This is done through this kind of generate sequence thing over here. Well, actually technically what's happened is that the action was passed through from the previous iteration, but let's just say like it's action right now for this current state is to go downwards, okay? But what's different about SARSA than Q-learning is that in addition to generating the sequence and telling me where I'm gonna end up, which is this S prime over here, Right, this is S prime. I also generate the successor state's action. So A prime over here is some action from this cell, right? So this is S, this is S prime. A prime is one of these green arrows over here, which represent the successor state's action. So not only are we telling our program, okay, go forward one step, but also plan ahead one step forward to go either here, 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 or back up, okay? Um, so yeah, that's what we're doing. We're, we're, we're kind of thinking we're crystally ahead by one step. So that's when we're just, I guess, thinking and generating these, these actions. So now we're gonna be updating our key value over here. So what happens over here? So this is simply, is, is, is what it says, right? We're taking the Q value of our successor state, this one, and its successor action, let's say it's just, we generate it to be this one, right? 
minus QSA, which is our original state and our original action, right? So what this is saying is that when we're updating the utility of this state, this action, so this state and going downwards, we're updating this state and going downwards, we're also including by some discount factor gamma, the utility of going to this state, uh, of being in this state and taking this action, okay? So one more time, when we're updating the utility of this direction, so this state going downwards, we're including the utility of being at this new state and taking this certain action, right? And you might be wondering, okay, how do we even generate this action in the first place? How do we choose this one? Well, all we chose or used was epsilon greedy. We use the epsilon greedy function to generate what action is best. So you guys might remember, epsilon greedy is a probabilistic function that chooses whether to, or not to exploit or explore by some uh, probability epsilon, right? So in some cases, this A prime could be telling me to go into the cliff, which is probably exploring because this is, you know, I, I, why do I want to go here? This is definitely not right. But most of the time, I'll be wanting to explore. So let's say A prime told me to explore. Uh, uh, sorry, most, most of the time, I want to be exploiting. Sorry, apologies. And A prime told me to go this way. So that's how it's generated. Um, when we're, and I guess to wrap things up, when we're updating the key value of this state, oops, of this state and going in this direction, we also include by some discount factor gamma of that successor state and following that successor action where we look ahead and we find that successor action using epsilon greedy. And then we pass that to the next state and we continue looking forward from over here. Okay, so pretty simple, pretty intuitive. Um, that makes sense. But what's different is that in Q learning, <clears throat> We don't actually do the exact same thing when we're updating our key value, right? So again, you can notice that we have this term over here and we also don't have an A over here, right? Before, SARSA spelled S-A-R-S-A, -S -S -A, SARSA, right? But here, we only have SARS. So what is this saying, right? This is saying that we don't generate A prime, right? All we do from this state is that we know that we're going in this direction over here, but we don't generate or look ahead and say, okay, I know I'm going to be taking, we don't, we, call, we don't call epsilon greedy on this state and say, okay, I'm going to go here or here or here. We don't know yet, right? We just say, okay, I'm going to tell myself I'm going to be going in this direction first, right? Pretty simple, makes sense. But the difference is when we're updating our Q value, right? So what happens when we're updating our Q value? We run this instead, <clears throat> max Q S prime A prime. So all we're actually doing over here is saying that, okay, I know I'm gonna end up over here, right? I know I'm gonna end up in this S prime over here, right? Now, forcefully tell me what's the best and most optimal action in this S prime over here, right? And in this case, this best possible action is probably going in this direction or something because the goal is over here, right? So we probably wanna go in this direction, right? So when we're updating our QSA value, we, we in, for this state, when we update our QSA value, we include the action or the utility of going in this direction, which is this QSA right here, but we also include the most optimal action possible, the, even, even if we don't decide to go there, which is this one. So you might be thinking, okay, you just demonstrated the exact same thing, right? Over here, um, A prime told us to go over here and A told us to go over here, same with Q learning, how is this any different, right? Well, it's different because remember, we're not, we're not actually generating and telling ourselves to do A prime, right? Look over here, right? It says A equals A prime. Oops, sorry. A, uh, A equals A prime, right? I actually follow through with my promise I made over here. I made a promise that at the successor state, I will go through with A prime and I'll update with A prime and I'll actually go through with A prime. But in Q learning, I don't have that promise. I don't actually tell myself that I'm gonna follow through with A prime. So what does this mean? This means that, okay, let's say I'm at QSA, I run the algorithm, I move my guy over here, right? Cause we follow action A and then we run generate sequence SARS, right? But then at this state, my A could be in this direction, right? I could choose to explore when I run epsilon greedy for this state. Right now, we're, this is S, we're not S prime anymore. This is S now, right? 
action can tell me to go over here. But what's different is that, remember, when we were back over here in the previous iteration, when we we're back over here in the previous iteration, we updated this Q value with this action, not over here, right? Because we just assume that, oh, when we're over here, we're probably gonna go over here. So I'm just gonna say and promise and assume that we'll always take the optimal action at each successor state. So the Q value for this, oop, the Q value for this action was updated using the most optimal action. But when we actually ended up going over here, right? When we actually ended up going over here and generated a, an action, we ended up choosing an action, QSA, that is actually in this direction. And we end up ending up over here later, right? So that's pretty interesting, right? Because when we're when the robot was exploring and trying to figure out where to go, right? It ends up doing a path that goes something like this, right? Like that. But when it was over here and updating the Q value for this guy over here, which is the down direction, which we all decided on, it was updated by assuming that we would always take the optimal path. But in reality, that doesn't always happen. And sometimes I might even slip into a cliff, right? So that's, that's, that's kind of messed up, right? It assumes that I'm always gonna take the alpha path, but that's not always gonna happen because remember, I could always slip, I could explore something. So that's why I guess um, key learning is often known as the very greedy algorithm. It's not, it's not realistic, right? It, it, it just assumes that the successor action will always be the most optimal. So hopefully that makes some sense. I'm gonna be applying another example down below, which I think will hopefully explain more things. Um, <clears throat> this is a more generalized and I guess, or not generalized, but like a more, I guess, bigger version of this grid world over here, right? Um, let's say we're starting at this goal state over here right? and our goal uh, or at the start state and we're, our goal is to get to this goal state over here, right? When we run Q learning in Sarsa, it's gonna spit out a bunch of Q values that will give us a policy, a, a bunch of optimal policies that will tell us the optimal path to get to the goal. Q learning tells us that the optimal path is this way. Sarsa tells us that's this way. So notice something here, right? <clears throat> the Q learning path is much more optimal, right? But it's also much more unsafe, right? The safer path is not optimal, but it's a lot more safe, right? Okay, I mean, I, I, I know just, reuse the same word but like do you get my point like like this is much faster but it doesn't come for the fact that i might fall into the cliff now let's think about why why doesn't it count for the fact that i fall into the cliff like i could just easily fall and slip into the here right i could you know transition probabilities like 0 0.8 or something right i could easily slip, fall into the cliff over here if i slip why doesn't it count for that because it's optimistic right when it, when in the beginning when it was generating all of its key values all each Q value it generates, right, is done by calculating the optimistic successor state action pair. The optimistic successor state action pair. Because it's optimistic, it doesn't account for the, I guess, utility of potentially falling into here, right? Obviously, the Q values that are closer to the goal will have higher utility, right? Because, you know, it, it's just closer to the goal, right? And if it doesn't count for the fact that I might slip and fall to the cliff or just do something wrong, that's why it doesn't really care about this, 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 like this chance of falling into here because when the Q values were being generated, it's assumed that we're always just gonna go this way, right? Because of this max over here. But for Sarsa, remember Sarsa, when we call generate sequence, we make a promise we make a promise that we'll actually follow through with the successor state action, right? That's why we have A equals A prime over here. And because we make this promise and use that promise to update our corresponding Q value, right? We use this promise, this promise, right? To update our corresponding Q value, right? The chances of potentially even falling into the cliff over here or just, and dying are a lot higher, right? Or no, no, no sorry, not the chances, but like, the they account for it more. It's the same chance of falling and slipping to the cliff, but the chances of that of that actually happening are just more accounted for because it falls through with that promise. So when the algorithm is running through this entire thing, right, going wherever all the place, 
And for the times when it's like over here and like over here and falls into a cliff, right? The key values account for that. And they get scared. It's like, oh crap, I don't want to be over here, right? Last time I was over here, I fell into the cliff. So I'm going to stay over here. I'm going to put more utility for these values and these policies. And when I'm over here, I'm going to tell myself to go up. When I'm over here, I'm not going to go in this direction. I'm going to go up over here because last time I was over here, I fell into the cliff, right? So that's why this is known as a safer path because it falls through with that promise it makes. And again, if you confuse yourself the difference, just remember, SARSA literally spells it out, right? S-A-R-S, -S, right? But then it also has an extra A, which is the uh, subsequent successor state action. So um, those are the differences. Um, hopefully that made some sense. Uh, I feel like last office hours, um, I had a lot of questions on it and I feel like I didn't explain it to the most uh, in the most clear way. So hopefully this kind of covers some things, but Tony will be covering um, this entire example in class uh, on Monday. So you guys should be fine, but I kind of just wanted to give you guys a, a supplementary thing because this is a pretty important concept. And um, I think it's also a bit hard to understand without, uh, you know, walking through an example and having some extra help. Um, so, because I definitely did not understand it when I was taking this class because I am, I am not smart. Anyway, so goodbye, guys. Hopefully this was helpful. Um, thank you, and see you later.